Hey there. So you want to get started with processes. Well, today we're going to start out looking here at our owner pipeline, which is our sales pipeline. And what we're going to start with is cloning in the new owner onboarding process from our template library and going from there to show you how to use processes and get started in lead temple. First off, let's jump down to the library. And we'll see here that we have um, these different processes here and Lead Simple will continue to expand on these and add to them over time. We're interested in the owner onboarding process. So we come in here, we can read the overview, we can click in and look at the associated steps of the workflow. I wanna copy it into my account. I'm gonna do that. Great. So now we have the Lead Simple owner onboarding process. We're going to click use this workflow and create a new process type and then click save once we're done. I've already cloned this into my uh, account, so we don't need to do that right now. But if that's if we were starting from scratch, then we would follow those steps. Now, what we're interested in doing is triggering that process at the end of our sales cycle. So if we jump into our sales setting for owners, we scroll down to new client. This is our one stage of the deal. Right at the beginning of this stage, we want to create a new owner onboarding process. So owner onboarding, drag that up to the top. Don't need it to be a wait step. And now we are gonna jump back to the deals. Close this. And we're gonna jump to Mark Lewis, who I've just talked to, and we close him. So you can see here, we enjoy our confetti. And now we have the create owner onboarding process right here as a first step. So I click this to action it and it will automatically populate Mark Lewis. In this case, there wasn't a property on the deal. So I'm gonna add that now. Okay. And Jonathan Bailey is also an owner on that property. That's why it just got sucked in. So we automatically populate those. We name the process. Um, we're gonna set the due date seven days from now, add tags, um, and we're gonna say that yeah, he is not a current client. This is a custom field, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So I start the new owner onboarding process, and this is just from the template within the simple, uh, and I'll just go through the process. There's a few different stages you'll notice in the process. It looks very similar to a deal. Um, in this case, stages are just the milestones of the process. So the first milestone is you're collecting all the information you need, then you set up all the accounts and portals, and then you have owner onboarded uh, final steps. If the uh, process is canceled, then you put it in the cancel stage. So I go through and I can check off the tasks as I go through. And you have detailed instructions here. This instructions asking me to make sure that I uh, select whether or not we have additional insurance. So I'm gonna jump down here and say, we do have additional insurance under that custom field. Refresh instructions and it's displayed there. I'll check that off since I completed it. Look at the insurance forms, make sure the additional insurance is updated. And we got a bunch of tasks. Uh, take away rules. I'm going to get our first email. So I'm going to select the setup fee. Uh, we could change this step to include a template for this and to send this to our owners automatically if we wanted to. In this case, I'm just going to skip that step. Now, make sure we collect the keys and get the garage door openers, gate openers. These instructions are also editable if you're an admin as you're going through the process. So it'll be like, um, we might also want to um, collect um, keys for gates in the back. So I'm going to edit that. So I'm going to say I've done that. And now we finish this stage. So we move to the next stage. And it's asking if all the documents are filled out with valid information. And they are. We jump 
Now what's cool too is you can include screenshots and um, videos within your instructions. So you can see here we have a video on how to add the new owner to the property management software and a picture there as well. And we're going to say we did both of those. So we added the property and the owner. And then we have a welcome video that's set to send out automatically to the owners. You can click on the email to um, inspect it, see what it's going to send out. And then um, we'll just leave that to send automatically. And the next step is to create the property onboarding process uh, here. So we're not going to do that right now, but that's how they would flow one to the other. So on, new owner onboarding would flow into new property onboarding and allow you to follow that flow because sometimes you'll have current clients that just want to bring on a new property and you wouldn't need to do a new owner onboarding for them. You would just start with the new property onboarding process. Now that we've talked about that a little bit, I want to jump into the settings for owner onboarding to show you a bit of that. Jump down here under processes to owner onboarding. And first off, we can show you here the dashboard page for your processes. So this is our owner onboarding processes and um, we're able to see everything that's on track and off track here, which is great. You can also, with save views, which is another feature that's included in the process add-on, you can create save filters. So we have our overdue tab here that we've created. And if we wanted to create another tab, let's say, I uh, will add filter to we want to see all of our completed processes. As you can see, we have two of those. I'm going to save that. New view. Hit save. All right. Now, it's just a bit of a side note. But again, you have your dashboard here, and you have all these powerful filters to filter it and inspect it as necessary. And, and all the filters for custom fields are supported as well. You see here. Now that we've looked at that, we're going to jump into the owner onboarding settings. What we want to talk about here is uh, a few things. We're going to start with the general tab. Uh, general allows you to name the process and have a singular name for the process. If you had uh, a process called leasing, then the singular name would be lease, for example. And then we get to define who is involved in the process. So in owner onboarding, it's very likely just owners, but in different uh, situations, like in the property onboarding, we might have owners, tenants, and HOA contacts. What this allows you to do, and we'll get into it in a second, is target specific groups of people with different uh, steps and, and particularly communication. So text and emails, can be targeted towards just the owner or just the tenant or just an HOA. Or you can also have emails that are sent to a custom set of static email addresses. So you can send, have a step in the workflow that automatically sends an email to all of your team members or to someone outside the company if you need to notify someone at any time in the process. But this allows you to basically segment the different groups of people that you need to communicate with in a process and allow you to target them with different steps in the workflow. So the next thing we'll look at is the team. You get to add all of the team members that you want to be, uh, to have visibility into this process. And there's permissions on each person as well that uh, you can set. And then we get our stages. We'll come back to owner onboarding. And in this case, we don't have any backlog stages for owner onboarding, but those would be kind of like on hold stages where you might have uh, some properties that are taking longer to onboard and you put them in on hold. Uh, and you'll check back in with them over time. But in this case, we just have active stages and completed and canceled. And what I wanted to do was jump through here and show you a few examples. So this is our whole workflow, and this might seem a little overwhelming at first. But basically, we can define a, a workflow in any way we want. This is completely customizable. And this is basically just an example. 
I wanted to go over here on the right hand side a few different settings. So for each different step, you can have instructions and you can write any instructions you want. It's rich text, you can add images, videos, and that allows you to really document your process as well so they can be used for training as well as for uh, particularly VAs or those employees that you want to make sure they have more detailed instructions on what to do. You can make them wait step, which will um, stop the workflow at that point and won't continue until they um, check off that task and complete it. Then you can make them re required as well, which means they will always, it will not go away until they've been checked off. And then you can assign specific tasks to specific users if you always want them to come from a specific user. Set a reminder that always reminds the person that is working on the process. And finally, one of the coolest things is the conditional logic. If then, if this, then that functionality. So in this case, we only want to send this email if we have not received the intake forms that we've request, requested from the owner. So this is a custom field on the process that we can set. And if it's set to no, then we will send this email automatically. Down below, uh, for the welcome onboarding video right here, so this template, then it, we will only send it if all intake information is, is um, not is set to no. Again, those are completely editable and support custom fields as well as uh, unit occupancy and property custom fields as well. So that allows you to have a lot of flexibility in your sales process because there sometimes there are quite a few steps that don't apply in that particular instance. And in those cases, you want to have conditions around them. A good example is whether or not a property has a pool. And you can ask, you can have a step, hey, add all the property information. And you ask them to, to add whether or not it has a pool or not. And if it does have a pool, there might be three or four other steps that you need to do in order to just set up the regular maintenance for that pool, uh, make sure you're in touch with the pool guy or that you have a pool vendor, etc. But most properties don't have pools. So you wouldn't need to include that unless the uh, person that's working the process, one of your employees, says that it has a pool, then you can have all those tasks get populated and tell them, hey, you need to follow all the pool steps at this stage of the process. So conditional logic is very, very flexible and helpful. So now we have our setting up accounts, as you can see here. And uh, then finally we trigger at the property onboarding process before we move to the owner onboarding. Um, and in the owner onboarding stage of the process, we even have some check-in calls scheduled uh, 30 days later, uh, just to help remind that owner um, and check in with them. So that's kind of an example of the settings for processes. There's much more. It's very similar to deals in a lot of ways, particularly around email templates and text message templates that you can incorporate into your process. Finally, before we quit, I want to show a little bit about the contact record and what that looks like with the processes associated with it. So if we jump to John Bailey, we can see here um, the not only the leads that are associated with this contact, but also the processes that are outstanding. And um, the two owner onboarding here, one's overdue, and um, that's because I triggered two. And you can see that, and so all of the ongoing processes would be listed here along with any email text activity uh, that would show up here as well. Um, and there currently isn't any, but it would show up here. And then for the property, this works as well. So we list all of the processes that are out uh, standing uh, or completed for that property. So it really helps bring unification uh, to the workflow and help people have visibility into that as well as if I jump back to Mark Lewis, you can see here that we also have sub processes since we triggered the owner onboarding process from this deal and it also tracks here. So if the BDM handed off this deal to someone in, in operations, 
and then they would be able to track and see how it's going, which is great. Finally, we also have property management sync, which many of you already have heard about in the other videos, and that's something that we uh, set up for you and with you to ensure less dual data entry on the whole. So it's really cool and helps ensure that you don't have to, again, do that double data entry. I think that's where we're going to wrap up. Thanks a lot. We'll be talking more.